Hi everyone, welcome to Sports and Anything Talk. Today I am here with my good friend. The date is August 25th, 2023. It's a rainy New England day. That's been a common theme here this summer. And if it's not pouring, we're dealing with oppressive humidity. Even on sunny days, it hasn't been uncommon to see wildfire smoke in the atmosphere, coming mostly from Canada. In this video, my friend will give a brief history on the town of Ashland, while also talking about the Nyanza plant that dumped toxic dyes and forever chemicals into the environment. My friend and I have known each other going on five years. We met at a previous job and our friendship remains strong. We thought it would be a cool idea to do a ride around with some commentary. Without further ado, here is my friend talking about the town of Ashland. So what years did you live in Ashland? I lived in Ashland in September of 1981. Um, well, let's see, until the autumn of 95, but then again, off and on through college years, um, you know, through the 90s. And then I lived here for, oh, left lane, sorry. Uh, then I lived here for a few years first decade of the 2000s. Um, last time I lived here was, goodness, over 15 years ago. And a lot has changed. A lot has changed. Real estate is ridiculous now. Um, traffic is much worse. Um, there's less trees. In what ways has the downtown changed since you grew up here? The buildings look the same, but a lot of the businesses are gone. Um, and really any usefulness I find in this house right here. Oh, you can park okay. right here. You can park right in front. It's chilling. He's a nice, guy. nice old man. He's a nice guy, yeah. I remember when he was not an old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. What the hell is that? Is that a coyote? Or is it a... I know it's not a stump because there's not a tree there. This is a fun way to spend a rainy afternoon. Oh, by the way, when was Ashland, Massachusetts Incorporated? Ashland, Massachusetts Incorporated, 1846. Originally it was Unionville before that. How about that? We're going on to Main Street here in Ashland, Massachusetts. Ashland, Massachusetts is about 23 miles west of the city of Boston. It borders Framingham on the east, Southborough to the north, Hopkins into the west, Holliston to the south, and Sherburn to the southeast. It is part of Metro West. It really is the heart of Metro West, to be honest with you. That's why it, it is so desirable, and that's why rents are what they are. <laughs> so there's a Boston Marathon route that runs through here? Yes, that is very true, actually. Uh, Pleasant Street is the original, um, is the original uh, start of the Boston Marathon the first uh, three or four years. Boston Marathon started in Ashland, um, starting in 1897. Uh, a lot of people forget that nowadays, but yes, it did start in Ashland, and then to become an official marathon, meaning the full 26.2, they pushed it back, and they pushed it back into Hopkinton. And now the route that we're driving on here, we're about mile 3.5 right here. So this is uh, 135 in Ashland, and we're looking you're looking westbound. That's what you're seeing on your screen. There is also the Heartbreak Hill. That's correct, in Newton. Yes, that's about uh, about 15 miles east of here. Yeah. Yeah. There used to be a dye company that operated in Ashland. Would you like to talk about that? Absolutely. Uh, Nyacold uh, was the name of the company. They operated from 1917 to 1978. They were a tool and dye manufacturing company. They operated on McGunco, McGunco Hill um, in Massachusetts, Ashland, Massachusetts. Um, that's where they had their, their plant on McGunco Hill in Ashland. And unfortunately for that placement, the Sudbury River was on the bottom of that hill. It still is, obviously. And that tool and dye company dumped heavy metals and a whole slew of uh, cancer-causing chemicals into that ground from 1917 to 1978. It poisoned the Sudbury River with mercury for 20 miles all the way to um, 
I believe it's Concord, Massachusetts. Um, so you can't fish in there. And some people still do. Some people, some people <laughs> still do, and that's their and that's their choice. And then they have to choose whatever whatever happens after that, I guess. But whatever. Right? Um, <laughs> but what we what we do know is that growing up. For a lot of kids, say like in the 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, a lot of these kids, they would go out into the woods and they'd see these ponds that were, for you know, ice, but it was multicolored ice, like you know, really strange. Like, oh look, I want to play with that. Well, you know, the interesting about thing about that is my grandparents told my uncle and my mother to never, ever, ever go in those woods. Well, I'm glad that they did because those were, that was all cancer. And some of those children would develop some rare cancers many did uh, a number of people over the years in town have died um, from very rare cancers uh, ashland has much more cancer than it should have and you know nowadays they have a cap over the superfund site uh, that was worked on heavily in the 1980s and 90s but unfortunately i say this and i'm just telling you this because this is a fact i certainly wouldn't live there but you know Instead of putting a forest there, or perhaps, you know, putting it back to a natural state, it was Indian land, you know, years ago, McGunko Hill, it was the McGunko Indians. Um, now there's just a bunch of condos on top of there. So I guess, you know, we, we're, we're really in 2023. I guess that's just what we so do So that's nowadays. capitalism for you. It's capitalism at its finest. So, hey, I don't know what's going to happen over there, the people living over there, but, hey, if you want to pay... 2500 a month for one bedroom for a condo on top of a super fun site. Go ahead. That ain't me. Even though there's a dome over the super fun site, there's still a bunch of toxic and forever chemicals in the ground. It's just not a good situation. I, I talked to someone in town years ago. Those chemicals are going nowhere. They're going to be there in a thousand years, five thousand years. There'll still be traces. And this is why um, they call them forever chemicals. That's why they call them forever chemicals. And I mean, the cap is really just a stopgap measure to prevent it from uh, to prevent the soil from still expanding and polluting more and more area. But the damage is done. I mean, you were dumping heavy metals and cancer-causing agents into the ground on top of a hill for sixty years. Uh, Gravity is not your friend there, and rainfall is not your friend, and, well, um, the damage is done, unfortunately. Uh, it can't, Ash it can't yeah. be undone. Ashland's a very nice town, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, the Superfund site is just one small little area of the town. Uh, where I grew up in, it was not affected by that, but, um, you know, it's still heavily concerning. So, people I know have died of some cancers that are pretty rare, and... I do wonder if that has something to do with it. I'll never know, but it kind of makes me wonder. If you compare Ashland from when you grew up here as a child to what it has become today, how would you compare it? Um, it's simply a different place. Uh, different, it's, it's a different place in time. Um, the biggest difference is, is that I grew up in a semi-rural small town that was on the outskirts of the Boston area. Now Ashland is a very urbanized, very busy uh, town that has about mm, two to three times more people than it did when I grew up in it. And also, too, I remember when downtown had no traffic lights. Uh, it got, first got traffic lights in 1987. Up until 1987, Ashland had about, I think, one set of traffic lights, actually. All those, a town of town of only 10,000 people 20 miles from the city of 600,000 you know it was um, a very very peaceful peaceful place and it was much more working class too nowadays Ashland is um, much more white collar um, people tend to be it's much more of a bedroom community I find that the cohesiveness of the culture of the town is not nearly as strong and that mirrors a lot of other towns in, in the United States it's just a trend unfortunately um, I think I found that with um, gentrification, that's also been something that's kind of ripped the soul out of the town a bit. And really the town has been kind of enveloped by the urban area. And when I come back to this town now, it makes me sad because I miss the, the depthness this town used to have in terms of what it meant to me. Because the things that, I know you can't go home again, it's really not so much that. It's really just the culture and cohesiveness of the town. And it's really, to me, very fragmented now. And I just, I just don't feel it anymore. And to the heart of what 
Ashland once was, it was mostly comprised of the middle class. And that is basically dissolved due to cost of living. And what you have now is the upper class and the poor. And that changes the pulse of a town. Well, it has been gutted and what happens in neighboring towns can affect it as well. And in 1989, the General Motors plant closed in Framingham, Massachusetts, which was only about four miles from downtown Ashland. Um, so you had a systematic eroding of blue collar worker jobs, uh, good paying jobs, jobs with benefits, really jobs that um, were union but were done well, were done correctly. Um, now really all you have is service sector jobs and health care related jobs and to me um, those are not as not nearly as um, beneficial in society in terms of the health of a society when it comes to having good paying jobs for communities because these communities are really just now suffering or they've disappeared completely and really you just have empty bedroom communities which really have no ties to the community they live in. It's really transient. And I guess that's the one thing I would not have used for Ashland years ago was transient. That simply did not apply. But now, along with many other communities across the country, things have changed. Things have changed. The dynamics and variables have changed. Well, there you have it. Two friends riding around in a car talking about the town of Ashland, Massachusetts. I hope you all enjoyed it. As always, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.